One program that I haven't really talked about all that much is um, a program by the name of Illustrator. It's a vector-based program from Adobe used for making uh, vector-based artwork such as the image I have right here on the screen and the image that you see here. And this was done using uh, Illustrator's uh, gradient mesh tool. And basically what I want to talk about is um, I want to explain the difference between this program and programs such as Photoshop and Corel Painter and ArtRage. Now with programs such as Corel Painter, Photoshop and ArtRage, I feel that programs like those take the traditional the tradition uh, take traditional craft, like the traditional mechanics behind um, crafts such as drawing and painting, and just sort of redefines it in with using new media technology. Where, whereas, uh, and they're all bitmap bitmap based too, in that they use pixels other than vector graphics. Whereas a program uh, like Illustrator um, doesn't at all. Uh, it doesn't use um, traditional. It doesn't use tra the traditional mechanics behind traditional craft. It um, has its own. It's, it has its own methods entirely. Its own mechanics entirely. And I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. And I'm going to demonstrate how why I why I don't believe that this is an example of new media technology redefining traditional craft. So right here I have an image that I did myself um, that I uh, that I made uh, based off uh, many different reference uh, pics and I want to go through how I created this image and how a lot of images in Illustrator are created this way. This isn't to say that that all images it, that are made from Illustrator are made this way, but it's probably the most common way. So I have my image right here. This is uh, an incomplete version. I have a more complete version on my website. Um, but if you see underneath it right here, I've got this thing sticking out. That's the reference photo that I use. So if I uh, deselect this layer, if I toggle the visibility, and let's see, let me uh, make this layers. I guess that's as big as it'll go. But let me hide the rest of these layers right here. You can see the image I have underneath all that. And basically how I composed this image was just by tracing the vector graphics around what I had on the photograph. So I'm oh, so I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick by creating a new layer called it's called layer 21 and I'm just going to pick something simple like the face and I'm going to zoom in on his face and this is a bad photograph so forgive me for that and I'm going to select my pencil tool I'm going to go over here and click over on the white palette on the this I'm going to select uh, no outline so I've got so I've got this palette selected and I'm just going to pick a color by clicking Alt, or not Alt, hmm, hold on a minute, it's been a while since I've used this program, eyedropper tool is I, well obviously, um, pencil tool is N, okay so I'll just, I'll just do it this way. So I have my eyedropper selected and I just want to select a general color for the face. So I would just pick, I'm just going to say, pick like this color right here. So I have my color, then I go back to my pencil tool, the color has been set, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just trace that shape. as close as I can probably not just maybe make a little scooby right there for the alright so there as you can see my it filled in the color automatically for me after I trace that shape 
And if I go over here and I control click on to toggle the visibility, we still have our outline. I'm just going to um, if I if I mess around with the fidelity, see what it does is it smooths out the angle by which you draw. See how his face kind of goes like this and then it divots inward? Well, Illustrator um, thought I was trying to make a more rounded line, so it rounded that part out. So what I'm doing is I'm changing the fidelity so that it doesn't do that. So let's delete that layer. Yeah, delete. Create a new layer. And I'll draw it again and see how that works. And I'll just make it real quickly. This time I won't even... All right, so that's a little bit better. Let's toggle the visibility on that. It's a little bit better. Not great, but you know you can fix it too by by pushing by altering that line. You should make this brush size smaller. And I don't know how. But all right, you know, so we'll just see, we'll just leave it as it is. So now what I can do is I can create another layer and now I can go in and select colors. and draw them out based on the shapes I see on his face. And I'm not going to do his whole face because I don't have enough time, but you know, just to give you an idea, I'm going to... So right here are the makings of a vector portrait. Um, basically just tracings of blotches of color uh, on the photograph. Uh, now, whereas if I used a program like Photoshop or Corel, I would simply have the reference picture side by side with my canvas, and I would draw, just draw on a blank canvas what I see, and then I would have to pick out my colors from a palette and try to get them as close as possible. And this is the, and you know, that is a method of redefining old techniques through new media technology, whereas this creates entirely new techniques, entirely modern techniques, and this is why I don't feel that this program uh, falls under the same um, sort of standards that programs like Photoshop and Painter fall under. This is an entirely new plane of its very own, and you know I do like this program, but it's not one that I stick to that much just because of its methods of uh, creating illustration.